And a very good morning to you. It's Friday the 2nd of August 2013. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. Well, what happened on the... Look, one email this week. That's it. One email. What's up? You all gone very quiet suddenly. Do you not like me anymore? Am I hated? <laughs> Am I hated? Well, I hope I'm not hated by Barry Manilow. Oh, yeah, where has he gone? There is a... A new Barry Manilow picture for the month. Yes, a new month. So he turns the page on the calendar. And there's Barry in all his glory, sitting at a piano in a beautiful white jacket. Not dissimilar, I have to say, to a white jacket that I had years ago in 1983 when I got married. Yes, I have been married once, boys and girls. You've got to try everything once a video. I have been married once, and I had a white jacket just like the one Barry Manilow has in his 2013 calendar with the August photograph. Do you not have one of those? Oh, we're too late now. They're all sold out. You don't think these things go in the cheap basket, I hope. Barry Manilow's stuff does not go in the cheap baskets. It all se Everything sells out. Every Barry Manilow item sells out. His calendars... His pictures, the mugs, the t-shirts, even the soap on a rope. The Barry Manilow soap on a rope sells out as well. And ladies, I've been hearing things up what you've been doing with those soaps on the ropes. And I'm not impressed. Okay? They're not actually there to be used. They are a Barry Manilow artifact. That's what they are. And they're not to be used for whatever. The Manilow soap on a rope. This stuff sells out, you see. You know, it's not like some of these, some of these um, minor celebrities like the Spice Girls who will print thousands and thousands of calendars only to find that only one of them's been sold by March. And then they have to dump the rest. They have to chuck it away. Or it ends up in the pound, but in Poundland. That's where it ends up. Poundland. Britney Spears stuff. You know, she prints all this stuff once again. Come March. There it is. All her old calendars in the 97p shop. Shocking. Doesn't happen to Barry Manilow's stuff, my darlings. Absolutely not. No. It all gets sold. It absolutely does. Right, we've got a couple of messages coming in already. Well, that was quick. That was... Are you trying to make up for the fact that you didn't send an email? You know, thanks very much. Good morning to John, who's already sitting on the sofa. Aren't you, John? <clears throat> Am I on a large screen somewhere? That must be very, very scary for you. Eh? A large screen somewhere. <laughs> and good morning to Richard from Yorkshire. Do oh, I've got Yorkshire. Just a minute, Yorkshire. One minute, Richard. I don't know. You're a bit young. You're oh, hang on. Something just flashed up then. Oh, there we are. Um, yes. I don't know if you'll know this tune, actually, Richard, because you're a little bit young, I think, to know this. Where's Yorkshire? Here's Yorkshire. <laughs> That's Yorkshire. It was like an old TV thing that they played on Yorkshire television before the programmes they made. Good morning, Richard, who tells me he was having a drink with Paul and Jim... Paul and Jimmy who? Who are those people? I don't even know who you mean, dear. Are they viewers and listeners to the show? I do hope so. Welcome to anyone uh, joining us from Facebook uh, for the very first time this morning. Please feel free to, to, to uh, share the URL... On your Facebook walls. The more, the merrier. Absolutely, the more, the merrier. Okay. Um, Richard said they should... Oh, Richard, the oh, you mean Jimmy the manager? Okay. They said I should ask you about your activities behind the DJ box and the brewers. Well, what activities would these be? Reading newspapers? Checking on Facebook? Something like that? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, Yorkshire Television. That's right, Richard. That's what Yorkshire Television was all right there. OK. Um, so there we are. That's that. Now, do you remember I told you on the last show about a little story with Ron? OK, my best mate Ron. And the story of the NatWest Bank when he went into the NatWest Bank. And I did ask you... If you have any similar stories like that, then please let me know. Well, my good friend Justin, who runs a pokey little pub up north, 
called the Steam Coach, where I work on that. You know, rarely now. I used to do every Friday night there. Um, uh, that was a, oh, a few years ago now. Um, but he runs a pub up north. And he, would, he said to me, I've got a very, very similar story to this. It's a post office story, boys and girls. Now, I am a bit of a supporter of the post office. I think they do a fairly good job. And when you want to pick up, when they try and deliver something, you know, and you're not in, it's usually not too much of a trek to get there. You want to pick up something from... Um, one of the others, like uh, UPS or um, City Link or somewhere like that, it's like a trek half away across the country to get to their sorting office or whatever, or their depot. You know, their, their sorting depot. I mean, it really is a couple of hours' journey. Usually, if something gets dropped off at... Uh, uh, if you get a card for the letter that has come sort of via the post office... Then you've only got to go either to the sorting office, which is always one sort of fairly close by, or indeed the post office if you've elected to have something delivered there. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm a great fan of the post office. Anyway, so Justin, a couple of weeks ago, wanted to post a letter. So he's walking towards, the, well, I say walking, more waddling, waddling towards. <laughs> I waddle a bit as well now, to be honest. Waddling along like a duck, you know, <coughs> towards this post box. And as he's approaching it, he spotted the postman. And he knew he was a little bit, you know, tight on the time. Spotted the postman. He then ran to the post box. As he got there, the postman had locked the post box door. And was taking his little sack of goodies. We like we like a sack of goodies, don't we? Who knows what's in that sack? That's why I like to have as many sacks emptied as possible. I really do. Pardon? So he's taken his... Uh, did he have two sacks or one sack? No, I think he just had the one sack with a few items in there. He got his sack and he's dragging it towards his little van. And my mate says, oh... <sighs> I've got to do the sound effects as well. Oh, I haven't checked my asthma today. Just a minute. 550! Try again. Oh, 450. We'll stick with the first one. <laughs> as he's got there... Oh. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. Yeah, can you put that in there for us? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We can't do that. Oh, why not? He said, I'm afraid you've got to put it in the, um, in the, uh, in the post box. Once I've, once I've closed the post box, you've got to put it in there. He said, oh, go on, take it with you. He said, really sorry, sir, I'm written, just not allowed to do that. You must put it in the post box. And, uh, my mate moaned a little bit. And anyway, so he then posted it in the post box. So the postman then comes back from the back of his van opens the post box, picks up the letter that Justin had just posted in there, puts it in the bag, puts it in his van, and off he goes. And before he went off, my mate says to him, why didn't you just put it in your bag? He said, no, it has to be done like that, sir. And this is the stupidity of people now, that they don't have a brain. No common sense. They must stick to procedures all the time. And it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I work for people like this, believe me. There's a couple of real, you know, stick in the muds who want something done in a certain way. It's all very well because I'm the boss. Most people I work for, fortunately now, accept the fact that, yes... This old bastard has been doing it a few years now and he might just know what he's doing now. But other people, they like pick at things. You know how they pick at things? You know when you're doing a job and as far as you're concerned you're doing it well and someone comes and finds fault. Like everything's running well 
as it is. Do you see what I mean? Everything's running well. Whatever you're doing in your life, everything seems to be ticking over well at your particular job. And then <clears throat> some numpty, usually a manager, comes over and picks faults. Little things that only she or he would notice. Miserable bastards. They really... Have you, have, have you got any examples of that? Do let us know. There are a couple of ways of communicating with me this morning. First of all, if you're with us live, and how do you know if you're with us live or whether it's a recording or not, just look at your clock, convert to UK time. I know most people um, joining in the live show are indeed uh, in the UK. If it's Friday the 2nd of August 2013, and it's coming up to a quarter to 11 in the morning, then you are indeed with us live. And you can join in live by two methods, either by, well, by three methods, either by Skype. If you have Skype, my Skype username is Chris Reardon, all one word, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. OK, two people are already communicating with us on the Skype. One, whose name is Richard, who's up in t Yorkshire, up t there, lad, where they make proper tea with barely any milk in it, which is exactly how I like it, Richard. OK, Richard's there this morning, and there's only half a face on his profile. How strange. He's got half of the face missing. Not only that, it appears to be in black and white. The people in Yorkshire have not yet cottoned on to the fact that we have colour photographs. I wonder, do they have colour television in Yorkshire? Is it still black and white there? <laughs> Does anyone know that? Anyway, that's how you contact by Skype. Skype username, once again, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Chris Reardon is the Skype username. You can send a message on there, or indeed, Skype in and talk to me on the show. It's always very... And I have my new phone to be able to talk to you today. My The red... The back phone is here. The Chris phone. This is the Chris phone. I have a lovely new phone, which I have yet to test out. So I would appreciate a call from someone at some point this morning. OK, so I can test out my new phone. Alternatively, if you do not have Skype, there is a phone number. And the phone number is 020 8133 6358. That's a local London number. 020 Eight one double three six three five eight is the local London number. Or you can do it by email. Now, whether you're watching us live or indeed watching the recording of the show, then you can join in by email at any time. And my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. .co.uk. Right? Uh, don't be a stranger. Be lovely to hear from one or two people this morning. Use one of those methods. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk or Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, or the phone number 020 8133 uh, John in Croydon, very do dodgy area, Croydon. Don't go there, boys and girls, Croydon. Nasty place. Oh! You'll be lucky to have the wheels still attached to your car if you drive down Croydon High Street, let me tell you. It's awful. Mind you, they have trams. I quite like trams. I like tra I haven't been on the Croydon trams. I've been on the trams in Melbourne, Australia. It's a long way to go if you want to go on trams. One of them's free. It's, it's called the City Centre Line, I think it is. And they're really old-fashioned trams. Beautiful. They're beautiful, they are. And this tram goes round and round in a circle, round the city all day long, and it's free. How wonderful is that? And you know what I'm like spending money, boys and girls. I don't like to spend the old money unless absolutely necessary. So I hopped on one of these trams. You know, it was a whole day out. I just kept going round and round. Eventually, I got talking to the driver. And he was all right at first, but then his kind of eyes were glazing over, I noticed, as I was talking to him. And I got off, and quite frankly, I think he was glad to see the back of me, to be honest. I mean, I say I was talking to him. I was doing most of the talking, strangely enough. 
I thought it might be a little bit dangerous if I carried on talking to him because he did look like he was about to drop off. Very nice, the trams in Melbourne. If you go to Melbourne, jump on it. It's a whole day out. Take sandwiches, uh, flasks, everything on the tram. Just sit there and go round and round in circles for nothing. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Uh, John says, do your funny noises. Well, I don't know if I want to do them today, John. Why would I want to do my funny noise? <laughs> do you like my funny noises, do you? Why do they amuse you? I don't understand why they amuse you, really. <laughs> Good morning to Shania. She's with us every Friday morning, aren't you, Shania? She's on the Isle of Wight. A little bit late today. Have you only just got up, darling? Isle of Wight, there's a, that's a nice place. There are no bad places on the Isle of Wight. Not like Croydon. You know. Awful place in Croydon, dear. Croydon. Anyway, so that's Justin's postbox story. Perhaps you've got some um, more examples of anything like that's, that's stupid. You know, when, you, when you've gone to do something, I know it's got to be done this way. And just, people just don't have... Well, I don't know if they just don't want to use their common sense anymore. Well, we had a story this week about how much money the um, councils are racking up now, certain parts of the UK, through parking charges. Uh, not only that, parking fines as well. <clears throat> sort of things where, you know... You're on a parking meter somewhere and you get back two minutes late and that's a £100 fine, which is just ridiculous. And the councils sit there on the telly being interviewed, various councillors, telling us that the money they make from these parking things, parking um, offences... Or mo more, mo more motoring offences, because there are other things as well. Motoring offences, they are not allowed to use it to raise revenue. That money has to go back into the transport network. And it's the biggest load of bollocks you've ever heard in all your life. It really is. They're I, I would stand it. They are absolute liars. Liars. It's all about making money. I am extremely careful... In my car, I try desperately not to take my car into London during the daytime. I do not want to drive in London during the day. They have the private parking meters, people, who walk up and down, dishing out their tickets left, right and centre. But they're just horrible people. They are horrible people. Now, the, the old traffic wardens, I, we used to call them wasps because they had a yellow band around their heads and things like that. Um, they used to be fairly reasonable. They would stand by your car for five or ten minutes to see if you're going to come back, at least give you some sort of chance. This lot, no, you've committed a fence, there it is, there's a ticket, and that's the end of it. I had a red route one the other day. I was unloading my car, actually in Belushi's in Borough High Street. Clearly unloading my car on a double red line where you are not allowed to stop at any time, day or night. OK, that's the rules. But there was nowhere to park. The three parking spots were taken. And they are the only places you can park around there. These three parking spots. So I don't have much of a, um, much of a choice, really. Anyway, she comes over. Woman it was. Right up her own arse. Typing away on a little printer. I said, well, I'll only be a couple of minutes. I'm just unloading my stuff and then I go and park around the corner. No, I'm sorry, sir, you can't stop here. Do, do you see what I mean? There is no common sense. If there's nowhere to park, what are you supposed to do? Go home? But then you don't get the job. You don't get paid. Don't get paid, you lose the job. You become another benefit claimant, I suppose. I don't know. It's just so ridiculous. 
they don't have an ounce of common sense in their heads. Either that or they're just nasty people. Just doing our job, sir. Not allowed to park there, sir. No exceptions, sir. You just end up hating these people and wanting something terrible to happen to them. I've said that before on them. Uh, among various people, you know. Like, I, I hope they die a terrible death and they say, Oh, you shouldn't say things like that. Well, I have, that's it. Shouldn't say things like that. They're only doing their job. Oh, get off one, will you? Idiots. All idiots. John says, I used to work for Lambeth Council Parking and it's as corrupt as hell. I was the one that used to read your appeal letter for your PCN penalty charge notice. It's easy money for the council. Did you let many people off, John? Did you have a look? What did, I bet you had to look at their photos, and if they were nice looking, you let them off, didn't you? This is why I don't get let off anymore, because I'm not good looking anymore. <laughs> I had my time, thank you, between the ages of about 31 and 45. That's when I was quite good looking. Not now. Lines and things. <laughs> Lines and things. My mate says, oh, why don't you have something done about that, my mate Ron? Because he's, I shouldn't tell you this, he's had fillers in his face. He's only 40. He's had fillers. Why would you have that? Pumping all that poison underneath your skin. I'm sure some terrible disease is going to come out of this at one point, some point, you know. Uh, people having all these things done to their faces and this, that and the other. I don't know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is uh, the email address. And what else have I been doing this week? Oh, uh, dentist. I've been to the dentist, haven't I? Do you remember? I've been to the dentist, boys and girls. An NHS dentist. Yes. <clears throat> For years... I've been going to a private dentist, okay, for, I mean, a long time, many, many years. Now, so the private dentist, when you have a checkup, it was, I'm just trying to recall the figures now, it was about £37 for checkup, okay? And with the checkup, you are in that dentist chair for about half an hour, and he's poking away and scratching things and doing stuff and all sorts of things. Um... And he would always say after a visit to him, OK, you'll need to see the hygienist now. And that, again, is a half an hour appointment. You need to go to see the hygienist. £45. And for that, she gets her thing out and she scratches all the rubbish off your teeth and does this whirly thing, polishing your teeth and all that business, right? OK? And then sometimes he would say, oh, you'll need two hygienist visits this week. So that's two times £45. That's 90 quid. So just to see the dentist, you could be spending... I mean, that didn't happen very often, but occasionally he said you'll need two hygienist visits, right? So a checkup basically would be £39, £37 pounds plus 45 for the hygiene. 45 55 65 75 uh, £84. Pounds. Is that 84 It doesn't matter. Somewhere around £84, pounds, right? Not only that, but whenever I went to see the dentist, there was always something that needed to be done. This is the private dentist, right? Whether it be a filling or something wrong with the gums, something. And that would be additional cost, you know, filling. I can't remember what it was now, about 55 quid, something like that. Oh, I've got to sneeze, just a minute. 55 quid for a filling. Um. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You never see newsreaders sneeze, do you? I've never seen a newsreader sneeze. <laughs> or do a strange noise, you know. <coughs> Never see newsreaders doing that, do you? So, 
the reason I stopped going was because, and I've told you this before, is because he did a fill-in and it became sensitive for weeks. Eventually it settled and then he did a fill-in and that again. And, you know, it was sensitive again for weeks and weeks and eventually it got better again. And I just feel, and when I went into the dentist, as far as I was concerned, there was nothing wrong on both of these occasions. There was no pain or anything like that, nothing leaking out. I do hate it when people leak out everywhere, don't you, dear? You know, you might be getting... I don't get on the bus now, but, uh, you know, you might get on the bus and you sit down with something damp. What's... You know, and you feel as damp on the chair and someone's obviously been leaking on there. It's really not very pleasant at all. But as far as I was concerned, there was nothing wrong with my teeth. Anyway, after those two visits where I had immense sensitivity and pain afterwards, I stopped going. I completely stopped going to see this dentist. And after six months, the phone starts ringing, you know. And you know it's the dentist because the little number comes up. The phone number comes up. And I started ignoring the calls. And let me tell you, the phone continued to ring. They badger you for these appointments. And that really pissed me off as well. Pestering you all the time. I saw the phone ringing. And then they try the blocked number approach where they don't send their call, thinking that you're going to answer it there. So I didn't. So I basically, one of the, it's one of the reasons I stopped answering the phone was, was the dentist, plus other companies trying to sell me crap all the time. And after about a year and a half, I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe I should go to the dentist and get something done. And I thought, well, I'm not going to him. I'll go to an NHS one. So, cut a long story short, which I'm not known about doing, you know, often people are sitting there screaming at their computer screens or MP3 players, get on with it. I don't know why, I don't know why they're like that, but I do try and get on with it. I find it difficult to cut a long story short, but I shall do on this occasion. So I went into NHS dentist, made an appointment, and the appointment was for four weeks' time. Now, admittedly... If you go to a private dentist, you can probably walk in there and get an appointment tomorrow, if not today. NHS, you've got to wait a little while. So, OK, four weeks, fair enough. So I waited the four weeks, and Monday came the day where I was to visit. So I went in there, you know, a bit scared, with my little, clutching my little paw full of, full of forms that you've had to fill in, you know, have you got this, that and the other? No to everything, you know. Never tell them what they've got, dear. They won't touch me then. I... <laughs> Stop it, John. <laughs> you know what I mean. You never tell them anything that you've got. No, thank you. So, tick all these boxes. And appointment was for 11.45. I got seen about 5 to 12. Went in there and I had a lovely dentist called Mo, who was from Lithuania. 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 I've noticed people from Lithuania are very good looking. Have anyone noticed that? Especially the fellas. All people from, all the boys from Lithuania are very good looking. He was about 32, 33, quite young for a dentist, I thought. Anyway, hello, sir. So he's, so I've sat down in the chair and he started poking around, you know, with this rusty old now thing that they stick in your mouth. <laughs> Number eight, number ten, number nine, number four missing, number three, and all that old business. And he was in my mouth. Ten minutes, something like that. He said, OK, yep, yeah, that's very good. Very good teeth, nothing wrong there. Now, bear in mind, I haven't been for 18 months. And before that, when I was going every six months at the private dentist, there was always something wrong. Always some sort of work that needed to be done, which of course had to be paid for. I've gone in the NHS dentist after 18 months of not visiting, nothing wrong. Now, what does that say to you? I'm sorry, is it coincidence? Is it the fact that possibly just on this one occasion, there was actually nothing wrong? And on all those other occasions, there was. You make up your own mind, because I've made up mine. Not only that, but after that, he said, right, I'll give him a little bit of a clean for you. He says, you've got a little bit of, um, <coughs> uh, 
gum receding at the back there. Um, he said, just be careful not to brush those too hard. Right? So he then gets out his little polishing thing. Cleans him up. He says, there you go. Have a little look in the mirror. You'll see him much cleaner there. And I peered in the mirror. And he had teeth like that in the mirror. And they looked rather clean. They were very clean my teeth there. They were looking at a lot of brown stains. Those of you with vision will be able to see how clean my teeth are now. Lovely and clean teeth. Thank you very much. Please come back in six months. He says, I know you're a little bit anxious when you come to the dentist. I said, I'll be, I'll be back in six months. So nothing to be done. Come back out to the reception. How much do you think that cost me? Come on, how much? £18 for that. Thank you very much. 18 quid on the NHS dentist. So there you go. All the time I've been going to the private dentist, people, and I tell people, you know, about work that has had to be done here and there. And people would say to me, oh, they're only after your money. And I would brush that off, brush that aside. I wouldn't believe them. Now I do. I do believe that now. I think possibly not all of them, but certainly the private dentist I was going to, I think it was just there to make money out of me all the time. Telling me I needed this, that done and that done and what have you. The only thing is, you know, did he ever do any work to good teeth that didn't need to be touched? Because I'm not, not happy about that. I don't want something fixed when there's nothing wrong with it. How many people do we know like that who want something fixed? Or who try and fix things that aren't broken. Again, I've had managers like that over the year where you're running a, a very successful, perhaps, DJ night or something like that. And then they, they try and kind of put their own stamp on it. You know, and, and they ruin it. Just leave it alone. It's the same with a dentist. I want it to be left alone, really. Left alone. Left alone. Good morning to Wendy. Who says, uh, good morning, Chris. Sorry I'm late, but I've only just realised it's Friday. It's five o'clock and it's Crackerjack. It's Friday, it's 10.30 and it's United Kingdom Talk with Chris Reardon. Good morning, Wendy. Have you seen the new Barry Manlow um, calendar photo? He's got his white jacket on. I was just telling him about my white jacket. I had a white jacket once, Wendy. When I was married. 1983, that was, dear. Yes. Didn't quite work out. Morning, Wendy. Oh, someone else wrote in. I can do that. that. That'll take us nicely into the single email that we've received this week. Thank you, Anita, for being the only person to bother to pick up uh, to pick up a keyboard and type me a letter today. Wendy, Anita says, "Good afternoon, Chris. Hope you're having a great day. It's always a great day in the happy, happy world of Chris Reardon. It really is." Happy, happy, happy. Just a reminder to change your Barry calendar to August. I've already done it, Anita. Anita has met Barry Manilow. Didn't you know that? Or oh, you, you probably missed that show then, didn't you? You see, it's no point just joining us now and again. You've got to be with us every week. Otherwise, you miss things out. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I gave away a three-week holiday somewhere. I'm sure I did couple of weeks before that it was a car you know you never know when a competition might come up next week i don't know next week i might decide to give away half a million pounds i haven't decided yet but of course if you're not here you'll miss it won't you there's no going back we can't go back you know there's no button here that would make us you know suddenly go back in time whoosh like like back to the future or anything like that we can't go back in time and repeat everything i said we can't go back in time and repeat everything I said. We can't go back in time and repeat everything I said. You thought it was stuck then, didn't you? <laughs> it's a bit like when the telly. You know when sometimes if you satellite... Oh, I fixed my satellite dish yesterday. Oh, yes. Because I noticed, um, certainly on uh, 
uh, some of the uh, BBC channels that uh, out, it, I mean a bit like that and the picture would block you know when you get the, the square block of the picture I thought I know what that is my satellite dish has moved so I went into the menu on the television and um, checked the sa satellite signal and the satellite signal was actually not too bad it was about seven but the quality was at three so I thought aha something's gone wrong there now uh, a few months ago i don't remember if i told you i bought a little satellite meter so is it i haven't got it up here with me actually and you you put it in between the the dish and your receiver which in my case is a panasonic telly right so i put it in between there and you turn it on and you adjust it and it makes a little noise it makes, no, it makes a low pitch noise ooh, like that and the, the needle goes from naught to ten so if it's just on, if it's on the, on, if it's actually pointing the correct way, the needle will already, already be moved out. So what you do is you move the needle down to number two on the scale of one to ten. You move it down to number two. And then you start slight, very carefully moving the dish, uh, trying to get the needle to come up. And you move it from left to right or up and, and, sorry, or and up and down. So what what you do? So so um, in my case, I I moved it from left to right and got the highest figure I could there, right, and then tightened that bolt, and then I moved it up and down and got the highest figure there, which ended up about eight on the meter or something like that. Um, so so you, so you would so if you move it from left to right and it goes up to say five, okay, and then it starts going down again as you're moving it, then you move it back again so it sits at five. Then you tighten that nut. And then you adjust the meter so it goes back down to two, and then you move it up and down and get that meter to go back up again as far as you can. So I've done that. Put the um, put the wire back on. Come into my house. There we are. Signal quality eight. Signal strength eight. No more blocking. Blocking. So I'm quite pleased about that. And that satellite meter, I think it was only about fifteen quid or something like that, which is well worth it because you can use it again. My satellite dish, incidentally, is is actually in the garden on the fence, so it's quite easy. It's not not like on a roof or something like that. Perhaps if you've got you know you know a, a pitched roof, or maybe you shouldn't be doing something like this. But it has saved me about 120 pound uh, trying to call someone out to do it. So I'm quite proud of that. Anyway, back to Anita's letter. Who says, um, just a reminder to change your Barry Keller. It's such an awesome picture. See, sure you have a fabulous weekend. We'll be watching your programme after work tomorrow. Take care, your friend Anita from Tennessee. And Anita also sent us in a little picture of um, Barry Manilow, which is sent in. A recent picture of Barry. And uh, he's sitting there at rehearsals for his musical Harmony which is opening soon. I think it's got a, a month's run somewhere in um, in the States. I can't remember where it is now. So thank you very much for uh, sending the picture in there, uh, Anita. Much appreciated for that. Um, oh, Richard's going. Richard says, I've got to go and jet wash my mum's horse wagon. Speak later. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a great horse. I like horses, but uh, I don't really ride them or anything like that. Uh, good morning, Shania, who says that she's only just got up, had a carnival on Wednesday night in Cows, and I'm still recovering. What what sort of carnival? Was it a music thing or something like that, Shania? Like a, like a, it's not the Isle of Wight Festival. Has that happened yet? I know that's a big music event that they have on the Isle of Wight uh, once a year. Uh, John says when he was collecting doing the um, parking tickets, he says, I was firm but fair. I could tell you some stories. The photos were hilarious half the time. Oh, haven't you, have you got any pictures to send us, John? We'd like to see those. <laughs> and he quite fancies Polish blokes. Is that right, John? I thought you fancied anyone, didn't you? <laughs> I think I'm at that point now, to be honest. You know, I take anything that comes. Anything that comes at all. Right, where are we now? Where's my bit of paper gone? Feet! My feet story. I now have insoles. You know I've got trouble with my feet. I now have insoles in my feet. So I went to see uh, yet another doctor about my feet. On um, Tuesday it was. And I described them the problem. 
I said, when is it worse? I said, when it gets, when I get up in the morning, um, when I stand on the floor and start walking, it feels like you've got a cut on the side of your foot and it's being torn apart. He said, right, he said, that's it, you can stop there. He said, you don't need to tell me anymore. That's absolute textbook, what you just told me. He said, you need some insoles. What's happening, apparently? Let me get my foot out. One moment, please. I'm now going to get my foot out. You have, those of you with vision, you have seen this before, okay? Will you be able to hear me from there? That's it. So, foot. Oh, God. Foot. Right. On the side of the foot there, right, is where most of the pain emanates from. Let me put my sock back. Are these new socks? Why? Oh, I might need... I might need to change my socks. <laughs> I've got to go back to hospital today again for my feet. So, so it's only got many, an hour show today, I'm afraid. So, <laughs> some people are quite pleased with that, I think, to be honest. Not, not many people stay with us longer than an hour. I do notice that because I do get statistics. Statistics and not many people. Most people actually stay with the show for about 15 minutes and then they're off. There was someone in Slovakia the other day who watched for an hour and 15 minutes. I don't know. Where. Might have been Eric, actually. My friend Eric over there. Could have been him. Anyway, so um, there's a, a muscle attached to that, and that's all inflamed and has been for many months now. So I've got these insoles, and the idea is you, you walk on these, and it takes the pressure off that muscle, and hopefully it will recover. He said, come back and see me in six months, uh, six weeks' time. Uh, he said it should have improved vastly by then. If not, we'll have to try something else. I might have to put injections into your feet. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no, not needles, dear. Oh. Don't like the idea of a needle going into my foot. Really. Or anywhere come to that. You know, I'm not a needle person. God knows um, how these uh, drug people do it. You know, to get a high and they stick a needle inside themselves. Oh, no, I couldn't be doing that. I'm sorry. No, thank you. I mean, I, I, I just feel, I feel, I feel sorry for diabetic people who have to do that all the time. Although, don't you have little pens or something when they're diabetic? A little pen that goes click, click, and that's done. Is it done? Just something like that. Where do they put that in their legs? I don't know. I'm very fortunate I don't have diabetes. You know, it must be a terrible thing to have. Right, what was I just telling you then? Did we finish that story? <laughs> I can't remember now. Da, da, da. Oh, foot in zone. Oh, yes, sir. So that's the feet. That's the feet. And I've got to go back again this afternoon, 2.30, over in Hampstead in London um, to have uh, the muscle in the foot and the leg going up. Uh, the, she, she does all this pushing stuff on the muscles. It's a very pretty girl, actually. She's blonde about... 26 the straight lads would absolutely fancy the bum off her they really would she's she's beautiful and i said to her the other day because like they push your feet up and down and all this business and she's pushing her chest against it i said i bet the straight boys love this don't they <laughs> of course she's learning at the moment what happens is you go in and you go in with like a, a trainee i think and she does all the work and then halfway through the appointment that the main man comes in and tells her how she's doing and he actually came in on this time he didn't tell her to do anything he seemed to be quite happy with what she was doing but she's a nice girl she comes across as a good time girl do you know what i mean i could see her going out at the weekends getting totally blasted and possibly going on to holiday to places like ibiza and ayanapa possibly not quiet places where i like to go now <laughs> might do Australia next year I'm not sure might go back there to see my family although I know every time I go on holiday the trouble is every time I go on holiday um, I, I come back saying that um, I will never go on holiday again because I don't like the and I hate the, I hate the travelling I hate it and quite honestly you know I get there sometimes and I can't wait to come home again because I miss my house but there you are that's me isn't it Shania says uh, the Isle of Wight Festival happened in June. The carnivals have floats with carnival queens and community entries. All oh, right, OK. Were you on a float at all, Shania? I don't think I'd be able to get on a float. The bloody lorry wouldn't move. 
I'm too fat now. I'm not too bad. About just under 13 stone. My weight has dropped a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Although I think it went up yesterday because um, yesterday was a very, very special day for me, boys and girls. Uh, it was. It would have been my mother's um, a, a, a birthday. And my mum would have been 83 tomorrow. I lost my mum in um, 19... Uh, in in 2000, uh, November the 18th, 2000. And um, I always go to uh, mum's grave on her birthday. I know you might, might think it's a little bit silly. And I buy a birthday cake. And I go down there with a cup of tea, a little flask of tea. And I sit there and I, I chat to chat to it's mum mum and dad are in the same grove, and I chat to chat to them. I got a little picture here, okay, of me sitting at the grave yesterday. All right, and it's 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 quite a nice experience really, being able to sit there like that, and chat away. You know, I mean it really is. Oh well. We all have to go at some point, don't we? And uh, I just feel my mum went a little bit too early. She was only 70, so she would have been 83. So happy birthday, mum, for yesterday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mum. Happy birthday to you. 83. It is, it is a very nice thing to do, just to, just to go there in the peace and tranquility of the uh, cemetery and, you know, sit, sit down there and chat. Um, but one of the things, they've changed all the taps there. And they've got these very modern affairs. They're like big green pillars. And you push a button. There's no, there's no, nothing to turn. You push a button and you get about 10 seconds of water comes out. The most ridiculous things you've ever seen in your life. So if you want to fill up like a, a watering can, something like that, you have to keep pushing this damn button all the time. 10 seconds of water, then you have to do it again. Well, of course, the one near my mum's grave doesn't work. It's not working. Pushing this button, there's nothing coming out. Also, uh, so I had to walk up to the next one, which well, is not far away. It's only about two minutes walk away. But nevertheless, you know, you, you have to fill out the, the, um, the watering can a few times so you can go to and from this blooming tap. Push it for 10 seconds, 10 seconds. And if you push your hand and hold it on there, nothing comes out. It's not like you can hold it on there and the water just keeps coming. No, you get 10 seconds of water. So they've obviously done that to try and cut down on the uh, uh, water usage, haven't they? But it's just a complete and utter pain in the arse, to be honest. This new water thing they've got. So that doesn't work. Putney Vale Cemetery they are at, my mum and dad. Which is in London. So I came home. And then... Um, my mate Ron and uh, his, his boyfriend. Oh, hang on. I've just done something wrong there. There we are. Uh, Mum, uh, uh, Ron and his boyfriend and me, we decided to go out for lunch. So we went out to, um, where was it now? To Windsor. Yes, to Windsor. It was a very nice place. I'm just trying to see if I've got a, a picture here. I like to show pictures, those of you that, um, I know not everyone watches the show, but we uh, might have a couple of pictures here. Ah, oh, there we are. We went to Windsor yesterday, which was very, very nice indeed. Very, very hot yesterday on Thursday. There's a picture of uh, me by the river. That's the River Thames, surrounded by beautiful swans, boys and girls. There were so many swans. I've never seen so many swans in one place, to be honest. Hundreds and hundreds of swans all over the place. <laughs> I've got a picture of the swans. Where are they? Swans. There we are. So many swans in one place. Unbelievable. Look, hundreds of them. And you could feed them. You could feed the swans. They had a little place where you could buy food for the swans. How wonderful is that? And we sat there feeding these swans. It was like 60 pence a bag. It looked like dog food to me. I'm sure it was just dog food. They were selling that for 60, 60, 60 pence for a bag of uh, dog food. Very nice indeed, Dave. 
But then we went into this um, restaurant called Brown's. And I'm just not very good in restaurants, I think. I, I, you know, I, I'm just setting certain things that I eat. And I, I, I like just normal... And, of course, vegetarian, it's always a bit of a problem, to be honest, going in most places. Eventually, I settled on this thing that was like flatbread... And it, it said in brackets, this is our, our version of the pizza. So I ordered this, this flatbread thing with a little bit of cheese on it. I, I tried to keep off the cheese as well. And some pineapples, I think it had on it. Anyway, it arrived. Very slow. Very slow service. So I didn't, we didn't leave a tip. I don't leave a tip. If you're too slow, I'm sorry. I don't care if it's busy. It's not my problem. That's not my problem. You know, we want fast service in restaurant. I can't stand waiting for food for ages. Anyway, it was a bit slow, so I had a, a glass of Coca-Cola, which I don't usually drink Coke or fizzy drinks. Maybe, maybe no more than ten fizzy drinks a year. Seriously, that's all I have. Although I've got a little bit, little bit of a liking to Lucasade. I quite like Lucasade. I do like Lucasade. So I had this thing, and it arrived. Well, quite honestly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you were hard pushed to see the cheese. It was like this flat bread, a little bit like that bread that they wrap in, wrap in a kebab. I don't know what it's called. Is it pizza bread? But it was hard. Well, not hard, but, you know, crispy. And it was very well presented. There was just no blooming cheese. I couldn't find any cheese on it. Is there any mozzarella on there? <laughs> ha So I ate that and had a little bit of a moan. Ronnie's other half, he had a chicken sandwich. I can't remember what Ronnie had, but we were, I weren't impressed with the food in there at all. No. So then we got up, and we had, it was so hot, so hot. Uh, then we walked over to the ice cream place, and I had a, a large tub. Get this right, a large tub with flake for me. A large uh, scoop tub, where I think he had mint, choc chip, and coconut. Three scoops of that for Ronnie. And his boyfriend had this little, uh, a medium size uh, tub, same as mine, with a flake in it. And that's a so I like the soft ice cream. You know the soft ice cream that you get from the machines? And the ice cream man, Tony Bell. Ding, ding, ding. It's like Tony Bell. The ice cream van's coming round, don't they? Ding, 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 ding. And they play all nursery rhymes and things like that. Ding, 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 ding. And the, the old ice cream man would come round and you'd all run out there, wouldn't you? Eh? Anyway, this was a shop. So I had that. Nine pounds... £9.90 for three ice creams in Windsor. Jesus Christ. I put less money in the collection plate in the church. £9.90 for three bloody ice creams. Take the piss, that, isn't it? Eh? But to be honest, you know, it was very much like a seaside resort we I found Windsor. Lots of shops selling souvenirs. Um, lots of people... Um, walking around and looking at the castle, because it's Windsor Castle, that's why they're, you know, from all over the world. You heard all these beautiful different accents from people and um, uh, different languages coming out of people, so that was nice. And then, then we're walking, walking past the castle with our ice creams, and I saw a... Uh, a... a, 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 a f what was it now? A, a, a fudge. A place where they make fudge, which is very nice. So outside of this fudge shop was oh, a couple of messages coming in here. Uh, John says, talking of big old birds, I see you've put on a few pounds, love. Well, I, th I don't think it's necessary to point that out, to be honest, John, do you? Put on a few pounds? Is it really necessary to point that out, John? Well, I'm offended. Would I point out any, any, anything that I saw about you? I, would, I just wouldn't do it. I'm not that sort of person, John. You know that, too. <laughs> and Shania says, um, Shania helps out with the Ventnor Carnival Association, looking after the queens and walking with a float. Oh, that's nice. It's, she does voluntary work, uh, Shania, so that's good. Um, so we went past this, and there's this woman standing outside there. Hi, do you want to come in the shop, have a nice time? 
Uh, come and have a look at our fudge. She's standing there with this post thing. I thought, oh, what an awful job that is, you know, to have to stand out there and pretend to be happy all the time. I mean, I don't pretend to be happy. I'm never happy. I'm very unhappy person. Very unhappy. So I says, oh, I says, I see, I'll put, I'll, I'll be putting the pounds on there. She says, well, she says, she says, my fat bum uh, is is due to that. And I said, well, I can see that, dear. And I thought, oh my god, I, thought, you know, I thought I was talking to someone I knew. And I just came out of my mouth, and she laughed and said, oh, I said, I wish I'd, I said, I'm never so sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I said, I'll tell you, and she said, oh, that's all right. She says, I know I've got a fat bum. I says, oh, you haven't. And she's laughing, so we walked off, and I felt so guilty, I had to go back. So I went, I said, I'll tell you what, you've made me feel so guilty, I'm going to have to go in the shop and buy something now. So I did, and I bought, uh, what's this place called? Fudge Kitchen. And she was so nice, this girl outside. Such a nice girl, and she... I just says to her, oh, I can see that when she's mentioned her fat bum, dear. I didn't mean to, dear. Oh, uh, hey, uh, it's another message from Johnny. He's probably apologising now. He says, I was only playing, bubs. Well, I'm mortally hurt. I'm very hurt now, John. As punishment, I want you to go on all your friends' walls and post links to this show. Thank you. As punishment. Anyway, so we bought from the fudgekitchen.co.uk, which is in Windsor, and they had various different types of fudge. One had one had port in it. I, of course, I, you know, I'm I'm very very unadventurous, and I bought a slice of vanilla fudge. Check this out. Oh, the smell! The smell. Oh, I love the smell of fudge. A large slice. Uh, now this was not cheap. Okay. Four pounds this was. Four pounds for this piece of fudge. But let me tell you, and I've just had... It's going to have a little bit in here. going to have a little bit. Oh. Oh. That is just... I'll have a bit more. Oh. Mmm. That is just so delicious. And they make it there. They actually make it there. Oh, I could just sit there and eat that entire slab now. I really could. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. They make it there. And just through the, through the back of the shop. They, they, had, they didn't have actually that many there. It was about... 16 different flavours, I think, and that's the front of the shop. And at the back, you can see all the fudge being made, and it's all cooling down on these shelves. £4.80, but it is absolutely delicious. So we had that. And then we walked a bit further, and it was this hotel, and they said, tea and cake, £5. I thought, well, we'll have some of that as well. So we popped into this hotel, big uh, downstairs dining area, Again, this is in Richmond. Can't remember the name of the hotel, I'm afraid. Anyways, we're in there. Ordered tea and a cake each, and we sat down. Very quickly, I started to become very hot. And I thought, my God, it's hotter in here than it is outside. It was really hot yesterday. It's like 95 degrees, it must have been. It was hotter in the hotel than it was outside. It absolutely was. So hot. Anyway, I drank my tea and had, had, had well, all three of us, we had tea and cake, had it as quickly as possible and left, couldn't wait to get out of there, it was so hot. Which was a shame, because it was quite nice, it was very clean in there, very comfortable, but it was just so blooming hot. You know, and I said to the waiter, I said, oh, it's a bit hot in here, she said, we have no air conditioning at all in here, they're not interested in spending the money. I said, well, that's ridiculous, you know. If it had been a bit cooler in there, we would have stayed in there maybe half hour, maybe an hour talking maybe bought something else but no no air conditioning at all in this hotel which was it was criminal it really was so i paid me 15 pounds and as there was no air conditioning we didn't leave a tip either there so no tips anywhere yesterday thank you very much mind you that's how i like it not leaving tips all right don't forget the email address is chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, uh, Ross, Ross Patzelt, who is a regular viewer, listener to the show, sent in a message. 
He sent in a little message, which I'm going to play you now. Um, he did actually send in a video, which I downloaded, and I hoped I was going to be able to show you. But, um, unfortunately, for some reason, I can't get that to work. I did try and pull it into the system earlier, but it's just not working. So, I'm just going to play you the audio of the um, uh, uh, little message from Ross Pat Delt. Okay, now he did send this in a couple of weeks ago, but he didn't tell me he'd sent it in, so I've missed it. So here it is. A little message from Ross Pat Delt. Hello, Chris. I would like to say I really enjoy the sh show. Um, please keep up the good work, as I think the show is great. Uh, not reading this at all. No word for word. Uh, I'd just like to say that I do watch you on uh, YouTube on my Virgin Media TiVo box uh, a few times a week. And I think that your show is the best ever. And I think you do deserve a chat show on Channel 5 or um, ITV Plus 4. Because um, we don't want you to be too popular. Um, what else going to say? Um, um, what else was I going to say? Um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say... Blah, blah, sausages. <laughs> there we are, a little message from Ross Patzel. Thank you very much for sending that in. Blah, blah, ah, 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 ah. And there we are. That's uh, about it. That's all we've got time for today, boys and girls. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching and listening to the show. Don't forget, do send in an email or two. It would be very nice to hear from you. Only one short email last week. I'm most disappointed only having one email. And uh, I hope Marge is all right. Marge, um, uh, I haven't heard from you for a little while, so I hope uh, all is well with you, Marge. Back again live here next Friday. If you're um, watching a recording and you're wondering how to watch us live, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's the main URL for this show, OK? unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. At the top there, you will find details of how you can join us live on Friday mornings at 10.30 UK time. All right? And uh, also send us in an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You can also subscribe to the show via iTunes. Go to iTunes Podcasts. Type in United Kingdom Talk and you'll be given the option of uh, downloading either the audio only or the um, video version of the show. OK? Time to go then. I'll see you next Friday at 10.30. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye now. <laughs>